Bud Robinson, along with C.W. Ruth, was one of the two best-known Nazarene evangelists of the first half of the 20th century. There were several things that the two men held in common, and the most important is this. Neither one was too sectarian. In fact, they both believed in conducting revivals across denominational lines, and so they would gladly accept invitations to preach in Nazarene churches, Methodist churches, Free Methodist churches, Wesleyan Methodist churches, and Pilgrim Holiness churches. In many ways, Bud Robinson became a very lovable character because of the way that he preached, as well as his own autobiography. In his youth, he stuttered and stuttered badly. And so as he felt a call to ministry, he had to struggle to overcome this handicap. He did overcome it and became one of the, the best storytellers in the Church of the Nazarene. And in a very strong sense, he was, he, was a, he was born in Tennessee. When he was a youth, his family moved to Texas. And he was very much a part of the Southern culture, uh, the Southern oral culture that places a great emphasis on storytelling. Uh, he had the ability to delight people of all ages, including children. Uh, Garen Roberts, who grew up in Pilot Point, Texas, tells a story of Bud Robinson spending the night with their family. And at the breakfast table the next morning, at a table full of children, Uncle Buddy picked up one of Mrs. Roberts' biscuits, held it up, and said, This is the moon. Then he took a big bite out of it and said, This is now a half moon. Then he put the rest in his mouth and said, It's a total eclipse. Children love stories like this, and so did adults. And by, by using effective language and, and, and relying on the storyteller's art, Bud Robinson was able to come up with a, with a, a preaching style that was very popular, and that it, it entertained people, but he also had a clear sense of what good holiness theology was. Bud Robinson once had an article in the Herald of Holiness titled, Don't Need No School. In it, he takes aim at those people who say, well, look at Bud Robinson. He never went to school, and yet he's an effective preacher. I can do the same. And Bud Robinson said, that's not really a good idea. He said, I would have taken opportunities if I'd had them, but I didn't have those opportunities. In fact, I'm 56 now. If I could go back 16 years and be 40 again, I would take five years and go to school right now just to be a more effective preacher. So he, de he despised the idea that education wasn't needed, and yet he himself uh, was able to overcome many of his handicaps. He did this because he was an avid reader. In that same article, he talked about how he would always start out on a trip with a bunch of books and magazines and finish them along the way. One of the ways that he stayed in touch with his audience was through his Good Samaritan chats. This was the name of a regular column that was published in Herald of Holiness. And he talked about his different travels, the people he met along the way, uh, the revival meetings that he conducted, and things that people had said to him. This, this kept him in front of the Nazarene public on a very regular basis. And of course, he was a great promoter of Herald of Holiness. It is said and reliably that he sold more subscriptions to Herald of Holiness than any other person in the early church of the Nazarene. Uh, the Nazarene archives even has movie film of him holding up a Herald and, and uh, showing it to his audience. A good idea of how effective Bud Robinson was comes from a headline in the Atlanta Constitution. In 1906, Uncle Bud was holding a revival in Atlanta, and after the services one night, the newspaper the next day had a headline that said, 200 men and women come to the front after Bud Robinson says, come on down.